Hello and welcome to our latest In the Community TV special. I'm Jennifer Beck. If you feel God calling you, are you willing to go? That was the situation Ohio resident Trisha Fissel found herself facing as she felt a pull to attend a multi-month evangelistic boot camp out of state. It would mean leaving her job and moving away from her husband for several months. Was it the right plan? Here's my interview with Trisha Fissel. Trisha Fissel spent several months in Florida, but I'm going to tell you it wasn't just wintering there like many people do, which is great. God was working, though, in an incredible way, and I'm excited to talk about your experiences with Christ for the Nation's Evangelism Boot Camp mm -hmm. that you attended earlier this year. Yeah, yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit about what is this boot camp? How did you find it? And how did you get there? Um, it's kind of a long story. Um, you remember in 2019, I had my Back to Life Women's Conference. Well, towards the end of 2019, I was praying about doing another one in 2020. Mm. And so when I was praying about it in the fall, um, we were thinking about names and different things like that. And well, during prayer one day, God said, I don't want you to do that. I'm going to send you to the nations. And so I thought, well, okay. I had no idea what that meant other than God was going to do something. So I just kind of started praying. When I would think about it, I would thank God for sending me to the nations. I didn't know how it was going to happen. And then in February, we had someone come into our church that said that God was getting ready to launch me out. And so I thought, okay, God, you're going to send me to the nations. And um, in June of that year, of 2020, I had a dream. And in the dream, I was in my car, and I was running out of gas, and my starter was going out, and I was down in a deep valley. And I knew that I had to get up on top of this mountaintop, but I didn't know, I didn't have the resources available. And so I pulled into this little service station, and then I had to go down the road because they didn't have the equipment that I needed. And so um, I drove down the road and there was this big service station and these trees. And I noticed that the trees, they looked like they were bare except for the tops, the tops were green, but I didn't recognize the, the tree or anything. But I pulled in and they said, yes, we can get you everything that you need to en enable you to, to get to where you need to go. So I said, okay. Well, then three weeks later, I was at work and I got an email from Daniel Kalinda with Christ for All Nations. And in 2016, I had attended the call in Cleveland, Ohio, and I signed up with my email address. So next thing I know, I'm at work, and this email pops up about Christ for All Nations Evangelism Boot Camp. And I was going to delete it, because I thought, there's no way my husband's gonna let me do that. And when I got ready to delete it, God said, no, this is what I want you to do. So I'm like, Jesus, you're gonna have to do something, because there's no way that my husband's gonna let me go to boot camp for three months and then to a three week trip in Tanzania while he stays in Ohio. But that's exactly what happened. I, I took the email home and we prayed about it and God opened the door and he gave me favor. So yeah. So before we talk more about how you personally were there and impacted, tell me what is Christ for All Nations Boot Camp? Well, Christ for All Nations was a ministry started by Reinhard Bonnke about 40 years ago, and God had given him a burden for Africa, for the continent of Africa, and he had a dream, and in the dream he saw a blood-washed Africa, and the Lord said, Africa shall be saved. And so he started this ministry, and over the 40 years that he was in this ministry, they saw 80 million decisions for Christ. And so a few years ago, Daniel Kalinda was raised up underneath, he was uh, Reinhard Bonnke's successor. And a few years ago, God gave Daniel a dream about um, the, double do uh, the decade of double harvest and about raising up evangelists to win basically the world for Christ. 150 million souls is what God spoke to him. And so he had been working for a few years on putting this boot camp together. And basically what it is, is they're looking for evangelists from all over the world that they can equip and train and then thrust them out into the harvest fields. And so we had a hundred students from all over the world in Orlando where we were equipped and trained by some of the best evangelists of our time. And then we hit the streets in Orlando. We did outreaches. We saw over 800 people come to Christ. We saw miracles, healings on the streets of Orlando. And then we went to Tanzania and we saw over 316,000 decisions for Christ in three weeks. And how long were you gone completely from home here in Ohio? About four months. Four months. Yeah. That's a big decision. You yeah. got a husband. Yes. You 
had a job back yes. here. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things, but yet you saw God working each mm -hmm. thing out bit by bit. He was so faithful. So, um, you know, we had to pay for our, our trip. We had to pay for the training and pay for our living expenses. God not only provided all of those things, because I did have to quit my job, but God not only provided for those expenses, but two days after I got to Orlando, somebody paid off my car. <laughs> Wow. They called, yeah, they called my husband and said, you know, the Lord told me to pay off Trisha's car. So, I mean, he just did amazing, amazing things. And I think when, you know, we're obedient to him, because that was a huge leap of faith. You know, our, our income was cut down into half and our, our living expenses doubled, essentially. But God provided everything that we had need of. And that's kind of scary. We're not supposed to be fearful, but in reality, yeah. in our human sense, that's a scary decision. Yeah. Leaving your job, income cutting in half, going off um, in a place you don't know, leaving your husband for multiple months, yet God told you this yeah. was the right thing to do. Yes. You knew it. Yeah, and I had peace every step of the way. I mean, it was, it was amazing. At first, when I was thinking about doing it, I felt like I was jumping off a cliff and had no idea it was at the bottom mm -hmm. because it was such a big, a big jump of faith for us. Um, but we prayed about it. We had, we had peace, and so that's what we did, and God just... He blew our minds time and time again with just his faithfulness. So, it was so let's, incredible. let's talk a little bit about your time there in Orlando. What was it like to go out and do the street preaching and these different experiences that we can have here in Ohio, but yet are a little bit different? The culture's different, yeah. the people are different. Um, it is a different environment mm -hmm. compared to what we have here. I mean, same God, same yeah. problems, yeah. but. Yeah. Not everything's the same. Well, the gospel works everywhere. <laughs> it is the power of God into salvation. Um, so basically what we did is we just, every week as part of our training, we were required to do outreaches. And so we would do door-to-door -door events. We would go into the malls. We would just go where people were. Um, and then one of the things that, that I think was really cool is in downtown Orlando, they would cut off streets or block off streets for the bars. So it would be like a huge party area. So on Friday nights, we would go down there and hit, hit the clubs basically and just walk the streets and, you know, win people to Christ. Um, but we would go to, to different places and just in the grocery stores, you know, and wherever people were, we would just share, share our faith about Jesus. I was staying in the uh, apartment that I was staying in. It had a gym in there. And I remember working out one night and a guy came in and he was disabled, talking about his disabilities and stuff and b being in the the armed forces. And I said, my dad was in the armed forces too. And he goes, well, is he alive? And I was able to share with him. I said, yes, by the grace of God, because my dad was diagnosed with cancer and God healed him, you know? And so I got to use that um, as a means to be able to start telling him about the Lord and the guy got saved. So, you know, so it was amazing, but it was challenging in, in some points, you know, um, just going up to people can be a little scary, you know, not knowing what to say, but when we step out and do it, God will fill our mouth and he'll mm -hmm. give us favor, so. So there might be someone at home who just heard you say that. It can be scary to go up yeah. to people, which is true. Even yeah. if we believe God's told us to, mm -hmm. especially in the world we're living in today, our cancel yeah. culture world where there's offenses and responses that are very strong. What did you do to get over that hump, to get yourself, did you just make yourself do it? Did you just say, I know that God wants me to speak to this person? Because it seems like once you do it once, it might get easier the next time and the next time and the next time. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is watching my thoughts, not allowing the enemy to bring fear, not allowing him to say, where do you, you know, because he'll speak to you. You're going to sound stupid. They're going to reject you. What are you going to say? And all of those things. But one of the one of the trainings that we went through in this boot camp, you know, a lot of it was for mass crusade evangelism. But the first few days, it was a one-on-one -on -one evangelism training. And so that really, it helped change your perspective on things. It helped you overcome fear. And so you would just have to, or personally, I would just have to sometimes just make myself do it, you know, because it was a requirement. But I found that um, I think sometimes I had better success just allowing things to happen organically. Mm -hmm. You know, through conversation, just like the gentleman in, in the gym just started talking to him and then, it, you know, God will open the door for it. And I, I think a lot of times, a lot of what I witness, you know, how I witness even at work, it, it comes apart like, or it's, it starts like that, you know, just with the conversation. Mm -hmm. And then God will always open a door if we're looking for him to do that. You know what I mean? He, we can, he can bring the conversation around 
um, to, to where we can witness to people. And so I think it's just making a decision and definitely praying. You know, before we went out, we would spend like a half hour to hour and a half sometimes in prayer, intercession, and worship. Mm -hmm. And so I think when we prepare our hearts that way, you know, God will bring us into, into the path of people because we have to realize He's the one that's working in the hearts of people. You know, it's nothing we can do. Paul said, I plant Apollos watered, but God gives the increase. And so we just have to be willing to be vessels that He can fill our mouth. And all we have to do is be faithful to say what He tells us to say. So important so. to be listening. Yes. Listening yes. To, to the voice of God yeah. and then being willing to act. And yeah. Being ready. It sounds like you were ready for when that mm -hmm. gentleman came into the workout room. So you were ready and willing. Yes. Which is important. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I find that when I'm when I'm ready and, and, and willing, it's so much easier. Because I've went out and I thought, man, I, I should say something to somebody. And I've done it and I've done it forcefully. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it lacks um, love and genuineness of heart you know what I mean and mm -hmm. I, I feel like people can sense that so I think probably the biggest thing for me is just preparing my heart you know and being ready and and allowing God to love people through me great information for individuals whether you're in Orlando or whether you're right yes. here in Ohio yes. I mean that's that's stuff we need to be remembering yeah like you said the gospel is the same everywhere yeah even in tanzania yes which you got to go to yeah go visit tanzania and mm -hmm. it took a little while for you to get there right in the middle of all of the COVID things and yeah. flight <laughs> things and testing and all yeah. of that um your trip to tanzania didn't go quite the way you had thought it would go no there was actually three of us because of COVID testing and timing and things like that we were actually stuck in detroit for a couple of days when the rest of our team went so we were a few days delayed but we still use that as an opportunity one of the things that that i did we were traveling back and forth from the airport trying to get testing trying to you know see if we could get a flight and all of those things well uh, we had gotten into a van that was taking us to our hotel from the airport and it was full of people and i told my friend brett i'm like man, I think I'm supposed to preach the gospel. And I had never done anything like that. And he's like, well, do it, do it. I'm like, what are they gonna say? And I thought, you know what? It doesn't matter what they say. <laughs> so he recorded it because I had never done anything like that. And I just shared the gospel with a van full of people. Um, it was a captive audience. <laughs> Where are they going to go? So I just shared the gospel with them. And I just said, listen, mankind was on their way to hell. You know, but Jesus or God saw us and he sent us Jesus. He's the life preserver. He's the lifesaver. And all we have to do is grab a hold of him. And so I got to share that with him. And then later on came to find out that our driver was a Muslim. Mm -hmm. So he got to hear, you know, the, the gospel, the salvation message. And several of the people in the van were already Christians, you know, and they, they thanked me for it. Mm -hmm. So it was just, it, I think it was more about me being willing to be, obedient to the voice of God. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I was so excited that I actually obeyed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because in the past, something like that would, would have been very intimidating, you know? And it still can be, and I still have to, to overcome those things. As a matter of fact, I remember one time I was leaving church um, in Orlando, and I went to this fast food restaurant with some of my friends from the, from the boot camp. And I preached the gospel to all the workers there. <laughs> You know, because God told me to, so I did it. And so it, it's amazing to, because I shared the gospel before I went, but I see that I do it in a greater capacity, you know, more frequently now than than before. God told you to. Yeah. That's, that's the key. Yeah. And how quickly we in our own free will can yeah. find reasons not to. Mm -hmm. Oh, they, they'll treat me bad or badly, yeah. or they, they don't really want to hear that, or I'm too tired, or I don't have the right words. But really, if God tells us to, yeah. he will equip. Yeah, right. absolutely. Well, there was, last week, I was on my way to the store, and I saw two gentlemen sitting outside on their porch, and I felt like the Lord told me to stop, and I didn't. And then I had to repent. I'm like, okay, Jesus, <laughs> if they're there on the way back, I'll stop. And of course, they weren't. And I thought, man, you know what? That might have been their only opportunity to hear the gospel, and I, I didn't do it. And I know it was the Lord, especially when something like that sticks with me. I know it's the Lord. And so sometimes it'll just be 
just a nudging in our heart, you know what I mean? It's not like he says, hey, go share the gospel. Mm -hmm. It's just a nudging or something that he puts in our heart. And I feel like the more we yield to that, the more we can be entrusted with his heart, you know, because it's his heart. Yeah. I mean, he wants people saved. He loves people. And, you know, God's given me a couple of visions and, and has really shown me some things since I've been back about people and, and his love for his sheep. So you talked about hearing the voice of God and mm -hmm. nudging, and I want to talk about your Tanzania trip, and we've got a book and other things to talk about, but mm -hmm. not, I'm going to guess we've got some people watching right now who, mm -hmm. who want to hear the voice of God, yeah. but don't know exactly how. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions, advice, just ideas yeah. to encourage people to take the steps to be able to shut out the noise yeah. and really know when it's God speaking. Well, the first thing is we have to be confident that we hear his voice, you know, and, and I believe it's John chapter 10, it says that my sheep know my voice and the voice of a stranger they're not follow. So we have to recognize that God wants to speak to us. You know, it's not just the fivefold ministry. It's not just the pastor, because for the longest time, I honestly thought that's what it was. You know, that I didn't have the responsibility to, to share the gospel or that I didn't have the privilege of hearing. You know what I mean? So the first thing I think we have to realize and recognize is that God speaks to us and He desires to speak to us. And secondly, it's not always like an audible voice. You know, sometimes we think that God's going to speak to us in different ways, but He uses dreams, He uses visions, He uses thoughts, He uses a burden that He puts on our heart. You know, just like the dream that I had with going to the boot camp and then me seeing the email. You know, it's not that I heard the audible voice of God. It's just that I recognize those things and it's like he quickened my heart for something, you know? And I think what's interesting with you talking about that dream is we all have dreams. Yes. But there are times when you can remember the details yes. of the dream very differently than you might with other things. And even yes. now you're telling me the details of this dream yeah. so realistically as if it just happened or yes. if it was real. Exactly. So it was a very different kind of dream. Well, and it was funny because I was telling a friend of mine in Florida about my dream. And when I was telling her, I looked up and I saw this grouping of palm trees and it clicked. I didn't recognize the, dream, the, the trees in the dream, but she looked at me. She's like, you look like you just had a revelation. She said, she said I see it on your face. I'm like, those are the trees I saw in my dream. You know, so it was just, again, another confirmation. But yeah, so God will speak to us in dreams. I write them down and I'll write the details because it's, you know, the details that, that will really speak to us. So God will speak to us through dreams. He'll speak to us through um, thought, through our hearts, you know, and it's just being open to, to recognize that it's God and then to do something in faith. How important you know? is daily prayer and Bible, reading the Bible? It's very important. I mean, that's our life, you know, and when, when I met my husband, we were acquaintances at first. But the more time I spent with him, the more I got to know his heart, the more I fell in love with him. I can recognize his voice in a room full of people without even seeing him. And that's how it is with God. It's like the more time we spend in his word, it reveals his nature, we'll hear his voice, and we begin to know him more intimately. And then the more we know him intimately, the easier it is for us to pick up his voice because we know it, you know. Very important information. Yeah. Well, let's jump back to your experience before we run out of time with Christ for All Nations. You were in Orlando and yeah. then you got stuck in Detroit yeah. and then you finally made it to Tanzania. Yep, we finally made it to Tanzania. So what happened once you were in Tanzania? Um, there was 94 of us and they split us up into five cities and then we were on five person teams. And so my, my team, for instance, um, the first two days we were doing gospel trucks, which would be like a mini crusade uh, type of uh, ministry. You, you would have like the gospel message, you would have healing and all of those things. And then we did kids crusades where we ministered to kids and things like that. And then, um, then we would go into marketplaces. So every two days we, we had a different experience, which was really, really great because you really got to learn your the things that you had been taught, you know what I mean? So we would go over there and we would minister and we would see healings and miracles, blind eyes open, wow. deaf ears open. It was amazing. It was amazing the 
the things that we got to experience and we got to see the gospel work. You know, some people that had never seen a miracle, they saw miracles. You know, we saw people delivered of demon possession. We saw insan insanity healed, it, just amazing, heartbroken people healed. In the name you know, of Jesus. In the name of you Jesus. You saw the power of the name yes, of Jesus yes. and what it could do. Yeah. Yeah, lives were completely transformed and changed. We saw Muslims, I mean, thousands of Muslim children and adults come to Christ. It was, it was beautiful, it was life changing. So you went there to preach the gospel. Yes. But yet you were also changed. Absolutely, absolutely. God used that to minister to you as yes, well. Yes, yes, okay. it, was, it was incredible, it was incredible. And then our last couple of days, we went back to Dar es Salaam and then we did one-on-one -on -one evangelism where we went into the streets. We had to find our own interpreter and then we, we were able to, to minister using an interpreter. So it was really cool because those are all the things that we had learned at the boot camp. And so going into Tanzania, it was our initiation trip. You know, we had coaches that would grade us, that would, you know, watch and make sure that we hit the things that we were taught. They would help us to improve the giftings, you know, and, and just develop as an, as an evangelist. So. so you did that for three to almost four months. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you can kind of be on a spiritual high. You have all the yeah. excitement and you had Orlando and you had Tanzania, but then you came back to Ohio. Yeah. And like you said, the gospel is the same everywhere. Yeah. And now you're doing things back here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, when I was in Orlando, I was praying because I, I really wanted to move there. You know, there was such an environment of expectancy mm -hmm. of, I mean, people were on fire and passionate for what the Lord was doing and he was using us to do it. And so it's, it's easier when you're around like-minded people with the mm -hmm. same passion. But when I was praying about it, the Lord said, no, I want you to take what you've learned and I want you to bring it back to Ohio. And so he said, one of the things that he specifically spoke to me is I want you to work with area pastors and training their congregations. You know, one of the roles of the fivefold ministry evangelists is to equip the people for the working of the ministry because all of us are called to be ambassadors and we're all given the spirit of reconciliation where we are to reconcile the world and to God through Christ Jesus. And so it's not God's desire that any man perish. And so he uses us, his body, to reach out. We're the sheep that are to lead other sheep to the good shepherd. And so that's one of the things that he's really put on my heart is to help equip the body of Christ for evangelism. And so one of the things that I'm doing on July 31st, I'm holding my first one-on-one -on -one evangelism training here in Lima, Ohio, and it's open to the public, it's free. I want people to come because, you know, I've talked to so many people that, you know, they felt like the Lord told them to share their testimony or to, to share their faith, but because of fear or not knowing what mm -hmm. to say, those things hinder people. And so, you know, we can use our faith and we can be taught different things that will empower us and help us to overcome those fears. And so I, I feel like, you know, the Lord has equipped me with something and now I want to pass that on to others and equip them so that they too can see that number one they have a purpose whether it's fivefold or not you know God we're all part of the body of Christ it's no longer going to be the big name people that do it it's going to be the body of Christ that wins the world and so I feel like God wanted me to come back to Ohio to share that with people so that you know he can have firebrands everywhere that are passionate <laughs> for him and passionate to see their loved ones, their coworkers, their family members saved. So that's taking place July 31st, eight o'clock to noon mm -hmm. at the Howard Johnson in Lima, one-on-one -on -one evangelism training with Trisha, Miss, Trisha Fissel Ministries. And they should go to your Facebook page or there's an event that they can, on Facebook that they can yes. actually go to or can they contact you directly if they have some questions about that? Yeah, they can contact me at info at .com. That's my email. Or they can message me on, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. How excited are you about this kind of thing? I am super excited, you know, because somebody shared the gospel with me and I, my life has changed, you know, and I had a vision the other day, I was praying about this and I had a vision of Jesus and he was in this big, beautiful pasture and I saw myself as a fat little sheep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he was so excited and he was so happy, you know, with all his sheep around him. But then I saw on the outside of the fence, there were sheep that were dirty, they were lost, they were broken, they had no shepherd. And I saw Jesus' heart breaking for them. 
And he oftentimes God uses, I don't have children of my own, so he uses my nephew. Um, he's got four babies, four little, four little kids, and they're the closest thing to children I've had of myself. And he said, Trisha, if one of those went missing, do you think his mom, their mom and dad would be content with just the three? Or would they give everything they had to find the one that was lost? And like Jesus, they would find, do everything that they could. Mm -hmm. He said, that's how I am with every one of my children that are lost. Everyone. Every, every single every one, one of them. Of my children. His heart yeah. breaks for those that are lost. You know, and I heard for the longest time people would say, well, you don't really love Jesus if you don't have a burden for the lost. And I thought, well, that's not true. I love Jesus. You know, and I didn't really have a burden for the lost. But I think there is such a greater love for him that we will partake in his suffering and we'll take on his burden, you know, to pray for the lost, to be, to be someone that he can use to help reach out and find those that are lost and res be rescuers. So you can be a part of the one-on-one -on -one evangelism training that is taking place July 31st, 8 o'clock at the Howard Johnson in Lima, Ohio. The information is on your screen on where you can get more information. And Tricia, we have like 30 seconds left. We're about out of time okay. and we want to talk about this book. It is The Power of Fasting, written by Tricia. Can you give me the, I'll give you 45 seconds, the 45 okay. second explanation okay. of this book? Um, well, fasting changed my life. It broke off strongholds of fear, unbelief, and all of those things. And so God took me through a journey of fasting, and I put in a book the things that I've learned. And so in there, it'll show you the power of fasting, but I also give you tips on how to be successful in fasting and overcome challenges. Um, and so that's what I put together, and it's available on Amazon. All right, and if you have questions about that, you can contact me here at TV44, and I'll make sure I direct you either to her or to this book. All right, we are all out of time. Thank you so much oh, thank for you everything so much. that you've shared. And thank thank you, you for saying yes to God. Thank you. And one more time, here's information about Trisha's one-on-one -on -one evangelism training that's scheduled for July 31st, 8 a.m. to noon at the Howard Johnson in Lima. Email info at trishafissel.com for more information. Thanks for watching this episode of In the Community. Next week, we give you a deeper look at the Ignite Community Relief Ministry, and we'll also introduce you to a local author with an exciting new release. Finally, the Southwest Signal Funding Project continues this month as we are striving to raise $250,000 toward the rebuild of a repeater tower in Salina. That tower is currently in Van Wert and will get moved to Salina. The purpose behind this project is to get the message of Jesus Christ to an even larger audience. This new tower will expand the TV44 signal further into Mercer County, Van Wert, parts of Auglaize County, and into eastern Indiana. Thanks for your donations today and in the weeks to come. I'm Jennifer Beck, and you've been watching In the Community, an inspiring conversation with Trisha Fissel. Have a great week.